Today, I'm going to explain a German-American psychological thriller mystery film called Flight Plan. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It is a tough night for Kyle Pratt. Kyle is an American aircraft engineer recently widowed by the death of her husband in Berlin. She has to take her husband's body on a flight to the US with her four years old daughter, Julia. To help her with her anxiety, Kyle takes pills as prescribed by her doctor. The next morning, it is snowing outside, a taxi is waiting for them to take them to the airport. While at the airport, Kyle loses Julia, she panics. She sees strangers, couples, foreigners, adults. But nobody kid-sized. She turns again. There's Julia, over by a sundry stand, with an angry tone, she advises her not to wander around without her permission. Kyle and Julia will soon board a plane that Kyle helped design. They are the first to enter the cabin. Julia looks out her window. Then she steams that window up with her breath and draws a little heart in the steam with her finger, a tiny, clumsy heart. Then Kyle takes a nap. Awakening from her nap, she realizes that Julia has disappeared from her seat. Kyle tries to ask other passengers, but none of the passengers recall seeing her. A flight attendant suggests that Julia might be playing with children of her age. Kyle walks down the aisle, trying to find her, but still no sign of Julia. Kyle continues to look around with an unease that's beginning to grow. She rechecks their row, where they'd fallen asleep. She looks under that blanket and finds the one-armed bear. But no Julia. That's weird. Julia wouldn't go anywhere without her bear. Then she contacts a flight attendant, Stephanie, to help her find Julia. Stephanie agrees to help her and makes an announcement of a missing child. A moment later, however, to her surprise, Stephanie tells her there is no record of her daughter boarding the flight. Kyle is confused. She is very sure her daughter was there with her, so she tries to prove it by showing her boarding pass. However, Kyle is unable to find Julia's boarding pass. And she also finds that her daughter's backpack is missing from the overhead bin, which is impossible because Julia couldn't have reached up here by herself. She's not tall enough. Seeing this situation, a Sky Marshal, Jean Carson begins to monitor her while she's searching for her daughter. Kyle demands to see the captain, Marcus Rich, to get him involved in the search for her daughter. Hearing that there's no record of her daughter boarding the flight, the captain asks if Kyle is under any medication right now. Kyle says that she was taking sleeping pills to help her with anxiety due to her husband's death. Kyle further reveals that her husband died falling from their roof six days ago, which she refuses to believe was suicide. The captain and the other crew members suspect that Kyle has become unhinged by her husband's death and has imagined bringing her daughter aboard. Kyle insists on looking for Julia from nose to tail. Captain Rich reluctantly agrees and orders the crew members to do a thorough search. The lights in the cabin are turned on. An announcement is made to all passengers not to leave their seats. Stephanie goes down to the avionics section, looking around, but still no four-year-old girls. While Pratt is busy searching, she sees an Egyptian. She confronts him as she recognizes him from somewhere. She tries to remember, but her brain's too scrambled right now. Kyle then asks the captain to look for Julia in the cargo hold. Captain Rich doesn't allow that, and angrily states that there are hundreds of passengers on this flight who are not receiving any attention at the moment because all flight attendants are busy conducting a search for a child that none of them believe was ever on board. Kyle doesn't take it well. She then runs to the Egyptian. She accuses the man of kidnapping her daughter, as she now remembers that she saw him last night, staring into her daughter's bedroom. The man is annoyed at being accused, then, he shows proof of receipt of the hotel where he lived, which is nowhere near her apartment. Then, chaos ensues. Kyle forces the man to confess, they fight. Carson, who is fed up with her behavior, states that her husband's death makes more sense now. A couple of hours with her, and even he is ready to jump. Not long after, Captain Marcus receives a wire from the hospital in Berlin that says Julia was with her father when he fell off the roof and also died of internal injuries. Now, the crew believes she is delusional. Kyle furiously denies it. She is very sure that Julia is still alive and still on the plane. Carson now feels that Kyle is a threat by making up such a story, so he handcuffs her and keeps her in her seat. A therapist, Lisa, approaches and tries to console her, causing Kyle to doubt her own sanity. She now begins to accept her daughter's death. However, she then notices that a heart Julia had drawn earlier on the window next to her seat is real. Kyle becomes increasingly convinced that something weird is going on. She then convinces the therapist to let her use the bathroom. Instead of doing so, 
She climbs into the upper compartment and sabotages the aircraft's electronics, deploying the oxygen masks and interrupting lighting. All passengers and crew start to panic, but Carson realizes that Kyle is the one behind this. She uses the chaos to take a dumbwaiter to the lower freight deck. She finds her husband's casket there. She unlocks David's casket, suspecting Julia is inside, but finds only her husband's body. And nothing else. Carson finds her, puts her in handcuffs, and escorts her back, announcing that the flight is making an emergency stopover at Goose Bay Airport, where she will be taken into custody. As she's escorted to her seat, one of the passengers begins to applaud. The applause spreads, filling the deck. Some others are staring at her, including the Egyptian. Kyle reaches the back row, where she stops and sits there. Kyle makes a final plea to Carson that she needs to search the plane upon landing. Carson considers for a moment, then decides to speak to the captain. However, instead of speaking to the captain, he sneaks down to the freight deck. There, he removes two explosives and a detonator concealed in David's casket. He then climbs down to the avionics section and attaches the explosives to the side of the platform, revealing Julia, who is sleeping. At this point, it is revealed that Carson has been the mastermind behind all of this. Carson and Stephanie have conspired to hijack the aircraft for a $50 million ransom and frame Kyle due to her knowledge of the plane. They abducted Julia to force Kyle to unlock the casket where he placed the explosives and detonator. Carson tells the captain that Kyle is a hijacker and threatens to blow up the aircraft unless the airline transfers $50 million into a bank account. Carson then tells an unnerved Stephanie that he intends to blow up the plane, killing the unconscious Julia, and leave Kyle dead with the detonator in her hand. Kyle still couldn't believe everything that has happened, she anxiously looks out of the window as the plane is about to land. Other passengers are confused because of the emergency landing. After landing, the passengers exit the aircraft. As the captain is leaving, Kyle confronts the captain, who angrily declares that the ransom has been paid. Kyle is confused by this. Soon, she realizes that all this is Carson's doing. He uses the situation to twist the truth and makes it look as if Kyle is a terrorist. Realizing this truth, Kyle decides to take advantage of the role of hijacker, commanding Carson to remain aboard and the crew to leave. Carson hesitates, but he realizes that if he refuses, it would be seen that the charade would be his. As soon as the plane's door closes, Kyle knocks Carson unconscious with a fire extinguisher, handcuffs him to a rail, and takes the detonator from his pocket. Stephanie comes out of hiding. Carson regains consciousness, he chases after Kyle, shooting until she locks herself in the cockpit. She opens a hatch door to the plane's attic and throws out a binder to fool it. Carson hears the upstairs thud and leaves. Kyle exits and encounters a guilt-ridden Stephanie. She punches her, who panics and immediately flees the plane. Kyle continues to look for her daughter to the avionics, and she finds Julia there, unconscious. She immediately hugs her and carries her. Carson soon follows, and while searching, reveals that he murdered her husband to smuggle the explosives inside his casket, knowing that it would not be scanned at the checkpoint. Kyle immediately carries Julia into the aircraft's non-combustible hold, with the detonator in hand. Carson shoots at her as she closes the door. With the non-combustible walls of the hold to protect them, she detonates the explosives, exploding the plane, killing Carson. The passengers and crew watch the explosion in shock. A moment later, Kyle appears with her daughter. As Kyle carries her daughter out onto the tarmac, all the passengers are shocked upon realizing that she had been telling the truth the whole time. The next morning, at the airport terminal, Captain Rich approaches and apologizes to Kyle for his skepticism. Stephanie is led away by the FBI in handcuffs, wherein an agent informs them that the Berlin mortuary director has also been arrested. Kyle carries Julia through the crowd of passengers who realize the truth. All are stunned and somewhat guilt-ridden for not believing her. Before loading her daughter into a van to take them away, Julia wakes up and sleepily asks, Are we there yet? As they get ready to leave. The final scene shows the Egyptian passenger helping to pick up her bag as an act of respect and forgiveness. That's the ending of the movie flight plan. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.